Vanakkam, namaste. Thank you all for being here today to listen to my story. And first of all, Eric, hats off to you. Thank you. Thank you for hosting this festival and giving all of us an opportunity either to conduct a workshop or to tell a story. Actually, when I was thinking of a healing story, I had not too many ideas in my head. But then finally, I decided that I would go with a story that I did myself. And I thought it fell well within the ambit of healing. So here goes. There was once a little girl called Radha who lived with her parents and her grandfather in a huge old house. The house was very, very old and it belonged to her grandfather. Over the years, it had fallen into a state of disrepair. So many of the windows needed mending. The paint had faded and sometimes the roof leaked during the month. One day, Radha heard her mother talking to her grandfather. Appa, I'm sick and tired of living in this house. So many things are going wrong. We don't have the money to maintain it. Why don't we just sell it? And her grandfather shouted back. Nina, how many times must I tell you this? This house has belonged to my family for generations and I will not sell it. And so that was that. And they continued living in that house. Radha loved that house. Many of the rooms were kept shut, but she still had lots of place to explore, many old things to play with. And what she loved the most was her grandfather. He was always willing to tell her a story. Every evening when she went running to him, he would be sitting there on his favorite armchair in the veranda. As soon as he saw Radha, he would close his book, take off his glasses, smile at her and say, Ready for a story, Radha? She would nod her head vigorously, climb onto his chair, snuggle up next to him, and listen to all his stories. Most of the stories he told her were of those childhood days, his own childhood days. Radha, there were so many people living in this house. My parents, my grandparents, my aunts, uncles, cousins. Not to forget my own brothers and sisters. Oh, Radha, every festival was celebrated with great pomp and splendor. All the food, the sweets, the savories were made at home. And you know, all of us children were also asked to help in the kitchen. What fun it used to be, you know. In fact, you won't believe this. Most of my friends also used to spend time in our house. But those were the days. One day, Radha asked her grandfather, Tata, there's this old clock in the dining room. Why is it called a grandfather clock? Ah, Radha, that's because there's a grandfather living inside. Tata, don't tell lies. Radha, I'm not lying. When I was a small child like you, I used to play hide and seek with my friends. And you know where I used to hide myself? Inside that clock, there's enough space for a little child to get inside. And nobody could ever find me. One day when I was sitting there, all of a sudden, Grandpa appeared. Grandpa? Yes, that's what I used to call that grandfather. And he started to talk. He became the best of friends. Every now and then, I used to go there and spend time with him. He used to tell me such amazing stories. Stories? Will he tell me stories too? You'll have to find out for yourself, Radha. And so Radha ran to the clock. The handle was a little bit high. So she stood on her tiptoes and tugged and tugged. The door opened. Inside, it was dusty and musty. But there was enough space for her. So she squeezed herself in and sat down. Grandpa, Grandpa, are you here? What do you think she heard? Tick tock, tick tock. Radha was very angry. She ran back to her grandfather. Tata, stop telling me such tall tale. There's no one inside that clock. Radha, maybe Grandpa was sleeping. Hmm. Radha didn't believe her grandpa. 
One day, a Tata felt very sick. He lay in bed for many days. Radha was sad and lonely. She missed her Tata and his daughter. Her parents didn't have any time for her. That's when she remembered Grandpa. Once again, she got inside that clock and said, Grandpa, Grandpa, are you here? I want to see you. But there was silence. And Radha started to cry. <laughs> And then she heard a voice. Hello, Radha. When she opened her eyes, sitting opposite her was a very old man. He had a long white beard, thick eyebrows, a big mustache, and two long flats. <laughs> Why are you wearing your hair in flats, Grandpa? Well, my hair had grown so long, I kept tripping over it. So I tied it up. Why? Do I look funny? Is that why you're laughing? No, no, no. Actually, you look very cute. But why do you live here, Grandpa? I'm the one who sounds the gong, Radha. Haven't you heard it? When it's one o'clock, it goes dong. Two o'clock, dong, dong. And at three o'clock, Dong, dong, dong. Yes. So you see, I have a very important job and I never sleep. You never sleep? Don't you feel sleepy? Why would a young man like me need to sleep? You, young? Radha, are you laughing at me? No, 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 no. But how long have you been living here? Hmm. Many, many years, ever since this clock was made. Grandpa, my Tata said you know stories. Can you tell me a story, please? Of course, Radha. It's been years since I had someone listening to my stories. And so Grandpa told her a story. And from that day on, Radha spent a lot of time inside the clock listening to Grandpa's story. One day, her mother came looking for her. Radha, Radha, where are you? Radhu, I know you're hiding here somewhere. Come on out. So Radha opened the clock and came out. Radha, what were you doing inside that old clock? Amma, you know, there's a grandpa living inside. He's the one who sound, makes the clock work, Amma, and he tells such wonderful stories. Radha told me about him. Oh, Radha, I don't know what kind of stories Tata has been telling you. Her mother peered inside the clock and shut it. It's only an old clock, Radha. Come away now. And so her mother didn't believe her. Her father didn't believe her. None of her friends believed her. And Radha decided that Grandpa would keep her secret. And so the days went on. One day at four o'clock, Radha realized that the gong had not sounded. She ran to the clock and opened the door. And there was Grandpa fast asleep. Grandpa! Grandpa! Wake up! Wake up! Huh? Did I fall asleep? Yes! And you didn't sound the four o'clock gong. Oh! Did someone notice? No! But if you do this again, somebody will notice. Okay, okay. I promise I won't sleep. Finish your homework. But when Radha had finished her homework, her mother called. But she was listening. And when she heard the five o'clock gong, she was so relieved. Days went on. But one day, Grandpa slept again. Another day, he slept again. First, Amma noticed. Then, Appa noticed. Then she heard her parents talking one day. So they I think it's time we sold that clock. Have you noticed? It stopped working. But Meena, do you think it's a good idea? You know how much your father loves everything in the South. But Sudhir, we need the money. At least we can pay the doctor's bills. Radha rushed into the room. Amma, Appa, you can't sell the clock. You can't. Grandpa lives inside.
grandpa. Oh, Radha, there's no one living inside that clock. It's just an old clock. Amma, please don't sell that clock. Amma, please. Okay, Radha, we won't sell the clock. Radha begged grandpa. Grandpa, don't sleep, Grandpa. Amma and Appa will sell the clock. Then what will happen to you? I am getting old, Radha. But I promise I won't sleep. But Grandpa continued to sleep. He slept longer and longer. And one day, the gong didn't sound at all. Radha went running to him and said, Grandpa, please don't sleep. I'm sorry, Radha. I think I'm getting too old for this. It's time for me to go back from where I came. Well, Grandpa, I'll miss you. I'll miss you too, Radha. But I have a gift for you. Go get me a pair of scissors. And so Radha brought the scissors. And Grandpa cut off one plant. And then he cut off the other one. And he gave them to these are for you to remember me by. And now you can share my stories. If nobody believes you, show them the plants. And even then, if they don't believe you, you still have stories to tell. Remember, when you tell my stories, I'll always be there with you. Grandpa, please don't go. I'm sorry, Radha. I can't stay here anymore. If I can't sound the gong, then what's the point of me being here? Take good care of yourself, Radha. Okay? Okay. And tomorrow if you come looking for me, I won't be here. Okay? Okay. Bye, Radha. Bye, Grandpa. And that was the last Radha saw plan. She had the flats to comfort her. But a few days later, her grandfather recovered. Once again, he was back on his favorite armchair. Radha told him all about grandpa. Her grandfather smiled at her and said, So, did he tell you stories? So many stories, Tata. You must share the stories with me then, Radha. And Radha became the storyteller. And Grandfather became the listener. And they spent many, many, many happy evenings together sharing stories. A few years later, her grandfather passed away. Her parents sold the house and they moved away. Radha was grown up. She had children of her own, and every evening the children would say, Amma, Amma, tell us a story. And Radha would share either grandpa's story or her grandfather's stories. And every time she shared a story that grandpa had shared with her, she would take out the flags because holding them always gave her the feeling that grandpa was with her. And every time she shared grandpa's story and her tata's stories, she felt that they would always be there with her. Because stories are what makes a person. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. That's a very heartwarming story. Anybody, any Anybody thoughts? Where, where did you, where did you find that story? Renu? Hi. Hi. Hi, Renu. Hi. Hi, Can you hear me? Yes. We're getting some echo. Renu, where, where did you where pick up, up, where did you find that story? It's a story that I've written myself, Eric. Oh, it's, it's a true story. 
yeah, about your film. It's not a true story. I made it up myself. It's oh, you made it up. Ah, very good. And what was your what was the um, what was the message or what's the central point of the story? Just the the closeness of the of the grandfather and granddaughter. Yes, and I also think that she found grandpa when she needed him the most. She was missing her grandfather. And uh, also, I think the fact that all of us are stories. And I think as long as we share our stories, we'll always be present with the person who's sharing our stories. And I remember reading a line in a book which said, when an old person dies, an entire library is burned down. So I think all of us are made up of stories, stories we have heard, stories we have told, stories in the, in the form of experiences that we have had. And I think every story, every experience has an impact on us. And I think uh, that's what happens to Radha. That uh, probably all the stories she heard probably made her into the kind of person she was. Mm -hmm. hmm. uh, Renu, I would just like to add on, like uh, when I heard your story and I could remember that we have heard so many stories from generation to generation, right? And I think that's, we don't know who's made them. And that's the whole idea about sharing stories so that, as you said, it should just keep going and the people should be, alive. So great job. Thank you. I particularly liked your use of the plaits, Renu. <laughs> it, was, it was great to see you holding them up. What are they actually made of? Is it real <laughs> hair? No, no, they're made of wool. Oh. <laughs> Do, I bought some wool and then plaited them together. Yeah. How does it feel for you to hold up these physical kind of proofs and show us? Well, actually, I hadn't thought of it, but when I shared this story with someone, they said, why don't you, they were thinking that you would hold up the plaid so I said, okay, let me get some white wool and make them myself. So <laughs> that was the feedback I got. So I think it's always nice. This is only the second time I'm sharing the story. I had written it um, about a year ago and I actually I didn't even write it down. I just recorded it and it just came to me. I had not rehearsed, I had not thought of, thought of any lines, nothing. It was like the characters took over and I feel every time I tell a story, I feel I go back and I get some feedback and I incorporate those changes. And I feel every time I share the story, it becomes different. It becomes a better version of the audio. Thank you. Uh, Renu, it was nice hearing your story. It's uh, always the grandparents parents leave us some memories, right? You may not exactly recollect what the story was at times, but that memory, uh, it urges you that you also have to leave such memories to the coming up generation. Yes, I remember the house that I had lived in. I mean, I didn't live in it, but my grandfather's house was huge. And at one point, a lot of people living in that house. And I think in those days, the houses were big simply because it was a joint family, you know, parents and different generations. And I think all of us had so many cousins to play with today. It's very sad, unfortunate that children, mostly that are only two or sometimes only one. It is sad. I remember when I was young, we used to have a long uh, grandpa this thing. And my, my mother just told that, you know, grandpa sleeps in that. So I used to believe that actually. Whenever the dawn sounds, I used to go and see, like, you know, maybe some old man will come and uh, this thing. So it brought back so many other memories. Thank you for the story, Dana. Really enjoyed it. Thank you, Jaya. In fact, I forgot to mention one thing that uh, where do you think the clock went finally? Actually, it went to Radha's house and it took pride of place in her living. That's what I want to end the story. I think I spoke of that. Yeah. Great. Good story. Really loved it. Let's go on.